Welcome to Pioneer Ion Sports. I'm Corinne. Today joining me, I have Coach Jim McGuire, the head of the baseball coach at Ball State. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I appreciate you having me. Yeah. So um, I'm going to ask you, you get asked a lot of questions about the team here. So I'm going to ask you some questions about before you became a coach here. What made you want to go into baseball? That's a great question. Um, had played, obviously played growing up. Uh, then played in college, bounced around at a couple different schools, uh, but finished my last two years at Cumberland University. And my coach there, um, Woody Hunt, who is nationally known, smaller school, but nationally known coach, um, after being there with him for two years and spending time with him and helping do some camps and being involved, he was one of the first ones that approached me and said, hey, have you ever thought about going into coaching? And at the time, that answer was no, because I was getting a business degree, was going to go back home into the St. Louis area and work um, and just kind of put baseball to the side. And he was kind of the first one to kind of get me thinking about that. And then that summer, I thought, well, I went back home in between my junior and senior year and I was playing still in the summer. But then there was an opportunity to coach a 15 and under team. So all the players were you know, freshman in high school, younger age. And um, so I was playing and then started coaching them and then just fell in love with the, with the coaching side and being able to communicate with the players and help players. And, um, and then I thought this is a way for me to stay in, involved in it because I didn't really want to walk away from baseball. I was going to be done playing. Um, so I guess I couldn't live without it. I guess I was going to find a way to do it. Um, so Coach Hunt at Cumberland, he was kind of the reason I got started with it. And uh, he got me jump started, and I was going to actually come back to Cumberland, be his graduate assistant, but then had another opportunity come up near home, and that's that's how I got started at University of Missouri St. Louis as a graduate assistant, and then have been in coaching ever since. Yeah, I 100% get that. That's kind of what it's like in college, because like or going into a career, so you have no clue really what you're going to do. You can have a plan, but it doesn't mean anything, you know. <laughs> we talk about that all the time in recruiting. I always ask recruits or their families. You know, what do you want to do? What do you want to major in? Whatever. And everybody has an answer, but then I always have to follow up with, well, it changes. they could change yeah. tomorrow, you know. <laughs> so I don't think we sometimes have to be quite that specific until we know exactly what we want to do. Yeah, just go with the flow, see what you enjoy kind of thing. I get that. Um, so obviously you went into baseball and played baseball when you were younger. Did you have a favorite team? Yeah, grew up in St. Louis, so I was a Cardinal fan. Mm -hmm. uh, St. Louis Cardinals have always been my team. Uh, growing up, my, my dad would take me to games all the time. We lived about 20, 25 minutes from the stadium, so it was fairly close. Uh, and then from the time I was able to start driving, then I would go to probably, you know, they normally play 80, 80, 81 games a year. I'd probably go to 40. <laughs> I'd probably go to 40 <laughs> games a year. Uh, would just go all the time. We would sit in the bleachers. I'd, I'd have friends of mine go. We would we would just, anytime we had a minute, we would we would take off and go to the stadium. and. So got to grow up basically around the game. And that, that's what I think, if it ever does come to Nashville, where they can have a Major League Baseball team with that many games and how influential it can be on not, not just the community, but on, on just on kids as you grow up, being, being around the ballpark and being around players. And, and that, that end of it, I think, is it, it kind of, I mean, I'm trying to be too philosophical, kind of, kind of groomed my whole life, I guess, being around there uh, and, and got my love for the game, I guess, to continue more and more. But, uh, but always been a St. Louis Cardinal fan. It's been kind of some lean years the last couple of years, but hopefully this year it'll continue to get, <laughs> to continue to get better. But um, I love the, the Major League Baseball side. I love the pro side, even though I've never been in it. Uh, as a profession, I've always been on the college side, uh, just always been enamored by the Major League Baseball side. Is that something you'd like to do one day, or is this kind of where you want to No, stay? it's just kind of where I want to stay and kind of yeah. finish up. I've got a couple friends of mine that, are, that, that coach at that level uh, that I do get to go see in the summer and spend time with. Andy Haynes, who's the hitting coach with the Pittsburgh Pirates, I get to go spend time with him. He's been with the Cubs and been with the Brewers, and uh, my pitching coach, one of my last coaches I had at MTSU is with the Cleveland Indians. Sorry. Cleveland Guardians now they changed the name that's right, that's so I don't right. want to be politically incorrect <laughs> um, but him being with them I, I get to go spend time with them and see it at that level and um, 
it, it, it's a lot. It's a lot more than you have to put in at, at this level. So for me, the college level has been the, always been the right fit. I can imagine it's kind of nicer to do it at the college level too because you get to form a relationship with those people before they potentially go on to the big leagues like that. Right. That's been my whole thing, and, and that's one of the reasons I got into coaching. I, it's, it's the relationship with the player. It, it, it really is. It's from recruiting them to getting them on campus to watching them grow, watch them develop, and then help them move on. Uh, to the next level and then staying with them, whatever that next level looks like, whether it's playing, whether it's going to school, whether it's getting a job, whether it's, you know, moving on, watching them grow into their families, um, you know, different things like that. that. That's always been a special part of it for me that I think if you're at the pro level, you don't really get to, you don't get to experience that quite as much because they're in and out and traded and free agents and moving them on and they get cut, you end their careers, or it's just a, it's a little different. It's a business. It's a business at a that level. Harsh. and Right, <laughs> way more, way more. It's a business at the college level, but not quite the same as it is at the pro level. Yeah, I get that. I used to, I used to dance and stuff, and you'd go on to like the bigger leagues, and it would be like way more harsh, way more cuts. But when you were kind of just doing it in high school, it was a little more like relationship forming. Right. So I can, I can understand that. Um, speaking of recruiting and forming relationships with your players, when does recruiting start for this season? Yeah, you, you start normally a, a year ahead of time. So if it, it, a senior now, you would have been started the recruiting process as his senior year started or the summer before. So that's the normal pattern at this level. At the higher levels, uh, all those years I was at MTSU, you'd basically be two years ahead. So you would be you know, in their junior year or right before their junior year, you would start to recruit them then, try to establish a relationship, identify them, who's gonna fit, who's interested in you, you know, all, all the different avenues from that end of it. At this level, and it, and it goes all the way up until school starts, it really does. I mean, we'll, we'll have players that won't make decisions until this summer that'll be here this fall. Uh, but normally for us, the senior year is the, is the prime, the prime time. So as soon as we finish this season, which will end here in a couple weeks, then we'll start to spend this summer finishing up this recruiting class, but then you'll start in the 2025 recruiting class. Uh, and I've already went out and started to identify some of those players already that you want to follow through the summer, start to make offers to, you know, and start to recruit them where you're basically running one, one year ahead each cycle. And then that keeps you in line, you know, going into the following year. Gotcha. Um, I know you've been doing this for a while, and I know you love Ball State, but just taking Ball State out of it, where has been your favorite place to coach, if not Ball State? Yeah, I mean, Ball State has been, it's, it's been a special place even for just the three years that I've been here, but um, spending 26 years at MTSU, um, I've spent, you know, basically half my life, uh, not quite, <laughs> but about half my life at one place. And it, it doesn't get to happen very often in coaching where you get to do that. Uh, so that'll always be a special place to me. I was a longtime assistant coach there, then became the head coach. Uh, so got to meet a lot of great people, do a lot of great things. Um, it'll always be, still live in Murfreesboro, uh, spent a lot of time in, in Gallatin now, but uh, it, it'll, it'll always be kind of where I got my, my first, I don't want to call it a big time opportunity, but a division one <laughs> opportunity to coach yeah. uh, and do things at that level. And um, <clears throat> you know, it, it'll, it'll always be kind of my favorite place. Yeah. Well, I've got one more question for you. I think it's the most important question I've asked so far. What is your favorite snack to get <laughs> when you go see a baseball game? <laughs> I'm a concession stand junkie yes. all the time. <laughs> Whether I'm going to a high school game, I went and watched Station <laughs> Camp. Station Camp play Green Bar the other night, and I'm not there 10 minutes. I'm already at the concession stand. You've got to. There's nothing hot dog and a hamburger at a, at a, at the ballpark. You can't, I mean, you just, you can't beat it. I mean, it's like yeah. having a steak at, at, uh, I'm, I'm, I know it's not great for you, but I'm a, I'm a hot dog guy most of the time at the ballpark. So. I mean, it's the best thing to have there, honestly. <laughs> it, is. it goes along <laughs> with it, right? It goes along with baseball. Yeah. I used to, when I was in high school, I'd volunteer for the concession stands at all of the high schools and stuff. And I love, I would, you know, get a little snack every now and then when I was giving them out. So I 100% get it. It's my favorite part of sports is the concession stands. It's a concession stand. stand. Yeah. Is right. Is right. Well, I think that is all from me today on Pioneer Ion 